Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode on Portfolio Revision Formula Plans in which we are going to focus on the constant dollar plan. Uh, before we take up an example, let us put some facts about constant dollar plan in place. The first thing that we need to keep in mind is that in this plan we are going to divide our portfolio into two parts. Number one, speculative portion of the portfolio and number two, the conservative portion of the portfolio. Obviously, the speculative part of the portfolio is going to be motivated towards uh, high capital gains, whereas the conservative part is going to uh, have an aim of uh, preserving the capital. So in this part, you could decide to invest the money in bonds or money market accounts or similar securities. The other thing that we need to remember about the constant dollar plan, my friends, is that the target dollar amount for the speculative portion is to be held constant. In addition, we also have to specify the trigger points. That is, we have to uh, specify the maximum and minimum limits of fluctuations in the dollar investment in the uh, speculative portion. And if the fluctuation goes beyond these threshold limits, we will then step in and rebalance the portfolio. You might wonder how do we rebalance the portfolio. My friends, it is pretty simple to do. What we do is we bring the speculative portion back to its initial value, that is the value from where we started, and adjust the conservative portion accordingly. It simply means that if the value of securities rises in the speculative portion, we just uh, skim off the profits uh, by selling the securities and add the funds thus obtained to the conservative portion. And of course, we are going to do the opposite if the value of securities in the speculative portion falls. We will then need to um, buy some securities for which we are going to withdraw the funds from the conservative portion of the portfolio. Uh, let us now take some uh, data and see how this plan can be put to use. We are going to begin with the initial portfolio value of $10,000. And as I said before, we are dividing these $10,000 into two parts, speculative portion worth $4,000 and the conservative portion worth $6,000. In addition to dividing the portfolio into two components, we are also specifying our rebalancing threshold or you may want to call it the trigger point if you so like. Uh, the rebalancing threshold is in this case is the speculative portion if it rises or falls by $1,000 or more than its initial value we are going to step in and take charge and bring the speculative portion back to the original initial value of $4,000. To see how this happens let us um, look at this little table and as we fill it the mechanism of this plan will become clearer to you. In the first column ladies and gentlemen we have the value of securities supplied to us uh, uh, already $10, $10.50, $11, $14, and $13, and $9.80. Uh, the second column will talk about the speculative portion. The third will talk about the conservative portion. In the fourth column, we have the sum total of column number two and three. That is the total portfolio value now. Uh, in column number five, we are going to um, keep an account of the various transactions, buying and selling transactions that we might to make in order to rebalance the portfolio. And in the last column, column number six, we are going to keep a track of number of shares that we have in the speculative portion of the portfolio. So let's begin quickly. We have the initial portfolio value of $10,000. And so let's fill that number in here. Total value of the portfolio that we start with is 10,000 of which $4,000 belong to the speculative portion and $6,000 belong to the conservative portion. And at the moment, we haven't made any transaction. This is our starting position. Uh, what we need to do in the last column here is that we need to write the number of shares that we have, uh, number of shares or securities that we have in the speculative portion. We have $4,000, my friends, as you can see in the speculative portion, and the value of each security is $10. So that means 4,000 divided by 10, that is 400 securities is what we have to begin with in the speculative part of our portfolio. Now in the next row, the price or the value of the securities is going up to $10.50. This will mean $10.50 multiplied by 400 is going to give us $4,200 in the speculative portion. The conservative portion, we keep constant at $6,000 
which will now give us a total portfolio value of ten thousand and two hundred dollars now when we look at the number under the speculative portion we realize that we have not yet crossed the threshold level which has been set by us at one thousand dollars the value of the speculative portion in this case has gone up just by 200 so the trigger point will not be activated and we are going to continue to hold 400 securities in the speculative portion and move ahead to the next row where the price is eleven dollars now with eleven dollars as the value of securities and 400 securities in the speculative portion the value of the speculative portion is going to be 11 times 400 and that will be 4400 and you will realize that we have still not arrived at the trigger point we keep the conservative portion at six thousand dollars and the total value of our portfolio is going to jump up to ten thousand and four hundred dollars number of uh, shares or securities in the speculative portion remains 400 in this row now ladies and gentlemen the value of the securities has gone to 14 so when we multiply 14 with 400 securities that we have in the speculative portion the value of the speculative portion is going to become 5600 and clearly we can see that we have jumped the threshold now which is 1000 um, and we are going to in a moment do the rebalancing after we complete this row so in the conservative portion we had six thousand dollars so let's uh, write that the value of the portfolio the total value is going to be now eleven thousand and six hundred dollars and at the moment we have four hundred securities or shares in the speculative part of the portfolio now let us do the rebalancing if we take a difference between four thousand and five thousand six hundred because we have jumped the threshold by sixteen hundred dollars fifty six hundred minus four thousand and we need to bring the thing back to four thousand dollars there's a difference of sixteen hundred um, dollars so what we are going to do is we are going to sell some securities out of the speculative portion worth sixteen hundred dollars and we are going to add these sixteen hundred dollars to um, the conservative portion so in fact here I should not have written sixteen hundred I should write 4000 we are subtracting $1600 from 5600 to bring the speculative portions value back to 4000 and the extra amount is going to be added to the conservative portion so that this is going to go up to $7600 keeping the total portfolio value same at $11600 now here in this uh, case we have sold some securities out of the speculative portion so in this column for transactions we need to make a note of how many securities we have sold we have uh, sold securities worth sixteen hundred dollars at the going price of uh, fourteen dollars so this means sixteen hundred divided by fourteen will give us approximately one hundred and fourteen point two nine securities so we are going to write here 114.29 securities sold which also means that the balance of securities in the speculative portion is going to fall by the same number of securities we had 400 securities to start with we have now sold 114.29 of them so what remains here is 285.71 securities we proceed ahead to the next uh, row and realize that the price has gone to $13. So 13 times 285.71 is going to give us the value of the speculative portion, which is going to be 3,714.23. And the value in the conservative portion remains 7,600, uh, giving us a total portfolio value of 11,314.23. No transaction will take place. We are going to have the same number of uh, shares in the speculative portion. That is 285.71. Why no transaction is taking place is because though the value of the speculative portion is declining from 4,000, it has gone to 3714. It has still not hit the threshold point because we have set it at $1,000. So in order for us to rebalance the portfolio, the value of the speculative portion must fall 
to three thousand dollars or less since that has not happened we move ahead to when the price or the value of the securities is nine dollars and eighty cents so nine dollars and eighty cents my friends multiplied by two eighty five point seven one um, securities is going to give us in the speculative portion a value of two thousand seven ninety nine point nine six which has now clearly uh, jumped below the um, fallen below the um, threshold level so we are going to have to rebalance the portfolio in a little while once we complete this row so in the conservative portion we have seven thousand six hundred the total value of the portfolio will be a sum total of the speculative and the conservative part uh, which is going to give us 10,399.96 and at the moment we have 285.71 shares. Now in this next row we are going to rebalance. So since the value of the speculative portion my friends has fallen below the threshold level we need to add some money we need to top up this portion to bring it back up to 4000 for which we are going to have to buy some securities how many uh, dollars worth of securities we need to buy for that we simply take the difference of this 4000 and 2799.96 which is going to be $1200 and 4 cents so $1200 and 4 cents worth of securities we need to buy to top up the speculative portion now the question is where does this money come from this money ladies and gentlemen as I mentioned at the beginning is going to be withdrawn from the conservative portion here and will be applied towards buying some securities to top up this uh, section of the portfolio so we are going to bring this value back up to 4000 by withdrawing funds from the conservative part so the value in the conservative portion is going to decline by twelve hundred dollars and four cents and the remaining value here will be six thousand three ninety nine point nine six which will keep your portfolio value same that is important to remember the total value of the portfolio will remain still the same um, now we have uh, bought some securities so in the column for transactions we need to write how many securities we have bought we have bought uh, securities worth twelve hundred dollars and four cents and at the running price of nine dollars and eighty cents uh, what we need to do is we simply divide twelve hundred point zero four by nine dollars and eighty cents which will give us one twenty two point four five securities purchased at this point in time which will also mean that the number of shares in the speculative portion will rise by the same amount we had 285.71 securities we are going to add 122.45 to give us the new balance of securities in the speculative portion which is going to be 408.16 and that ladies and gentlemen in brief is the um, constant dollar plan pretty simple to implement I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.